Hey, what's up? This is Sean. I recently moved into a new place since I'm working from home, and I want to make some improvement of my living space by adding more storage, so that I don't put things everywhere. After doing some research, I realized I can leverage the space under the bed, so I decided to DIY my own platform bed with storage. Here's the thing: I don't have any tools and space to do the woodworks at home, so I cannot just simply buy some plywood and build from scratch. Which means I need something modular, easy to access, and customizable. Based on that, two retail stores immediately come on top of my head, which is IKEA and Home Depot. All right, let's jump into the design. First of all, I need a queen bed. The one that I choose is IKEA Hakson. Based on the dimension of this mattress, I can think of how big the storage will be. And the key feature that I want for the storage is to have multiple cabinets and drawers. So that Kia section wall cabinet caught my eye. It perfectly fits my need because it has so many sizes you can choose, so I can make different combinations based on my requirements. The things in the middle are some plywood for extra support. I will mention that later in this video. Last but not least, the foundation. This is very important. It makes sure our platform bed is stable and reliable, and since the section wall cabinet door is aligned with the bottom of the cabinet, if you directly put it on the carpet, it's very hard to open. So we need a foundation to create some space between them. Next, design details. We know the size of the queen bed. Then we need to choose the combination of the cabinets. It has different width from 12 inches to 36 inches, and it also has different depth. But I only choose 14 three by four inches one, and I will talk about the reason later. Besides, the height of the cabinet is 20 inches. I choose this size because I don't want it to be too high, which is hard to get on the bed, or too low that there's no enough storage. So based on my usage, I choose 15 and 18 inches one close to the wall, a 30 inches one in the middle, and another 18 inches at the end. So the two cabinets close to the wall has the single door. The largest the cabinet in the middle has a double door, and the one at the corner has drawers. On the other side of the bed, I'm gonna use the same setup. So let's put all those cabinets under the bed. You can see there's a big space in between, like a big tunnel. So I will add another 30 inches double door cabinet at the very outside to become the entrance of this tunnel. Back to the topic of choosing the depths of the cabinets. The reason I choose 14 three by four inches is because it leaves a good amount of space in the middle I can leverage. The adult male can easily get into it and put something like suitcase, offices, and clothes, or anything you don't normally use. On the other hand, if I choose deeper cabinets, the space in the middle is too narrow to put things into it. Lastly, our foundation. In order to support all the cabinets, we need to make sure we put the boards on the inside bound and outside bound, as well as the horizontal direction. The material I choose is the pre-panned modeling board from Home Depot, with four inch width and eight feet long, and I will need five of them. By the way, the actual width of the board is 3.5 inches. Make sure you use this size to do your measurement. Since we cannot cut the wood at home, we can use the Home Depot wood cutting service to get the specific size we want. Now we have all the pieces. Let's assemble them together. Here is the finished look of the foundation. And let's get a closer look. One important thing is we need to make sure we connect all those boards to use corner brackets to make it more stable. And here is another small tip: you can use tape to help you mark the location and distance to make sure you put your foundation in the right place. The foundation is ready. Now let's assemble all the IKEA section wall cabinets. Before moving forward, let me answer a common question people may have: Is the cabinet sturdy enough? 
I'm 175 pounds and the cabinet can support me very well. Even for the widest 30 inches cabinet, it's also good, so we don't need to worry about it. The next step is very exciting. We will need to put all the cabinets on the foundation. You might notice the cabinet in the middle doesn't have the back panel. That's intentional, so that we can move into the inner section and put stuff over there. Next, we will need to add some extra support in the middle. All the materials are coming from one sheet of 4x8 plywood. What we need to do is just to cut the wood into different shapes. The first thing we want is 8 pieces of 12 by almost 20 inch support and put it on the side like legs. The second thing we want is 4 pieces of 12 by 30 inch board and that goes to the top. Lastly, the rest of the board can simply lay on the very top. You can get this 4 by 8 plywood from Home Depot. And again, ask the staff in wood carding service to help you to get all the pieces you need. So now we got everything. Let's put them together to see how it fits before we actually tighten them. Everything looks good so far, and since we have all the components ready, it's time to fasten them and make sure they are sturdy and reliable. The very first step is to drill the hole between the cabinets and the foundation, and then use the screws to connect which make sure your cabinet doesn't shift. Next step. Fasten the adjacent cabinets by using the existing pre-drilled hole from the cabinet itself. If you see the gap between the two cabinets, you can try to unscrew and re-screw again until a gap is not noticeable. Remember we have some wood pieces to form the extra support in the middle section. We also need to fasten them with our cabinets. After that, we will need to put the top board above the sideboard by using the glue and screw. Last step of the middle section, lay the biggest board on the top and fasten it. Now we put the last cabinet in place. If you don't like the gap in the middle section, which is totally fine, you can simply put some form into it. Majority of the work has been done, but we're not finished yet. We need to install the doors and drawers as well as these IKEA push openers. With this push opener, you don't need a knob or handle for your door. You can simply push to open and then push to close. Now let's get started to install the door. and we we'll continue to finish all of them.
the way we install the push opener for the double door cabinet is different. We need to mark the middle of the frame and install the push opener next to it. After finishing the doors, we will need to install the drawers for the corner cabinets. and also for the push openers. Once we finish both sides of the cabinets, we can switch to work on the middle one. And I don't think install the push opener here because I won't open this one that often. So everything is assembled. Let's do a quick width test. Alright, we're finally finished and let's do a final walkthrough. With the push opener, the storage looks very neat from the outside and I put a shell in the middle which creates more reasonable space to use. At the corner, there's two drawers. You can put things that I often use in here. And in the middle, we have our secret storage. You can see the space, it's massive. Alright, now you just need to put your mattress and bedding on top and we're done. So let me know what you think about this platform bed in the comment section down below. It will be super helpful if you can smash that like button and share this video. And subscribe to the channel if you want more video like this. Then I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.